Is it illegal to buy a fake Rolex watch? Well, it's not illegal in the United States to buy a counterfeit watch for personal use. But if you buy two, you better watch out because you could end up in jail. And if you think it's tough in the United States, don't even think about possessing a counterfeit in France. Hi, my name is John Farrell. I'm a Silicon Valley intellectual property attorney. Welcome back to my channel. I was on a business trip in New York about 25 years ago as a young intellectual property attorney, and I was thinking a lot about counterfeits. I was writing and counseling on counterfeits, and I ran across a guy on the street selling fake watches. Now, I knew they were fake watches. He said they were fake watches, and you could buy a Rolex for $10. Now, he opened up his raincoat. It really was a raincoat, and he had about 100 watches on the inside of his raincoat. So super interested in counterfeit watches, I bought a couple just to check them out. Now adding the counterfeit watches to the shelves of other counterfeit junk I had in my office at the time, I have to say that the fake Rolex kept pretty good time. As a simple electronic timer, it actually was probably more accurate than the all mechanical Rolex. But aside from keeping really good time, the fake Rolex was clearly inferior. It had a plastic leather band, the logo was a bit messed up, and the crystal covering the watch face itself was actually distorting the watch face just a little bit. Anyway, I wasn't expecting too much since it was sold to me by a guy in a raincoat on a street corner in New York and delivered in a sandwich bag rather than in a nice Rolex box. Now, as I'll get to in a minute, the vendor was actually facing significant legal consequences had he been caught. Although, honestly, there were police roaming the streets and the coffee shops along the New York Avenue, and they didn't really seem to pay much attention to the vendors on the streets. Now, before jumping into the consequences of trafficking in counterfeit goods, that is, the importing, buying, selling of counterfeit goods, I think it's useful to define counterfeit goods. Now, there are two types of goods in commerce. There are authorized goods and there are unauthorized goods. Authorized goods are goods that are authorized by the brand manufacturers. These are goods that are manufactured, they're distributed typically to retailers or to wholesalers, and they're sold to the public through normal retail distribution. Now, unauthorized goods fall into two major buckets. There's gray market goods and there are black market goods. Now, gray market goods are goods that were legitimately manufactured by the brand holder. The manufacturer has been paid for the goods. However, gray market goods have not been sold through an authorized channel. Somehow, the goods got into the hands of an unauthorized dealer. An example of this can be found in the sale of prescription goods. A prescription good, for example, might be sold to a foreign country at a discounted price. Now, the reason it's discounted could be that there's a local manufacturer, or that regulatory barriers are lower and the cost of selling is lower, the cost of distribution may be lower, or there may just be political reasons why the manufacturer wants to sell at a discounted price in a particular country. These gray market goods then are purchased in the foreign country and re-imported into the United States and sold in the United States. And the frustration for the manufacturer with these gray market goods is that these foreign goods sold in the US are often sold at a much discounted price. Another case where gray market goods are a problem in the US is where a manufacturer has seconds or damaged goods which are exported and sold or donated to overseas countries and then re-imported and sold in the US as first quality goods. This creates damage for the reputation of the manufacturer and therefore the manufacturer wants to prevent the importation of foreign goods into the US and sold in the gray market. Now, the courts have held that the sale of gray market goods in the United States are not illegal so long as the goods are not materially different from those other goods that are being sold by that brand in the US. And that material difference might be something like a differentiation between a foreign country's product and a US product. But the bottom line is these gray market goods are not authorized by the manufacturer. And we might actually find that the manufacturer chooses not to support or provide warranties for these gray market goods sold in the US. Now, black market goods are different from gray market goods. 
Gray market goods are actually manufactured by the brand holder, but black market goods are either counterfeit, stolen, or otherwise illegal goods. For example, the guy in the raincoat on the New York street corner who was selling me a fake Rolex watch, he was dealing in black market counterfeit goods. The watch that he sold me was in fact not a Rolex watch, but was a cheap counterfeit, a copy of a Rolex watch with a poorly embossed Rolex fake logo. The sale of black market goods in the United States is illegal. Now there's another category of related goods that are neither authorized nor illegal, and sometimes these goods are called replica or homage goods. These replicas are close copies of original famous articles, but do not carry the famous brand's logo. An example of this is the famous Rolex Submariner watch, which was first introduced by Rolex some 70 years ago. There have been many homage replicas made of the Submariner. Two examples of this Rolex Submariner include the Invicta Mako Pro Diver and the Devosa Speedline Black. In addition to these two, there's lots of examples of Rolex homage or replica watches. Although buying counterfeit goods for personal use is not illegal in the US, trafficking in counterfeit goods is illegal. The importation or buying of counterfeit goods for resale or the selling of counterfeit goods in the United States is a violation of federal law. The maximum penalty for first time offenders trafficking in counterfeit goods is 10 years in prison and a $2 million fine. For second time offenders, the penalty is 20 years and a $5 million fine. Corporations trafficking in counterfeit goods can be subject to a fine of up to $15 million. Counterfeiting is a huge problem in both the United States and overseas, and some estimates are that more than a half a trillion dollars of counterfeit goods are sold in commerce throughout the world each year. So why is counterfeiting a problem? Counterfeiting is a problem because the goods have been manufactured illegally, and they may be harmful to the public, they may be harmful to the environment, they may be harmful to the people that are manufacturing the products and violate, in many cases, child labor laws. They create consumer confusion. People buy one product thinking it's another. That harms the brand and it harms the economy. There's hardly any benefit to spending money on research and development if another company can just come in and knock off your product without spending the resources to actually develop something new of their own. And counterfeits steal jobs, and they deprive society of taxes. And according to US Customs and Border Protection, counterfeiting supports organized crime and human trafficking. And that's the US. Foreign jurisdictions have completely different laws, and you need to be aware of them as you travel in various foreign countries. France, for example, has very strict laws on counterfeiting, and even the possession of counterfeit goods can subject you to confiscation, fines, and even jail time in France. Now, if you found this video helpful, I have another video on copying that I think you'll find useful as well. If you have any comments or questions about counterfeit goods or any other intellectual property issue, leave it in the comment section below and I'll try to answer your questions. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time.